So one of three ideas I wanna put in there is the importance of spaced repetition. And repetition can have choice, whether that's which book do you wanna read first, not which book do you wanna read, is the idea of choice, but repetition. And so the brain research tells us again, that early learning needs some choice brought into it. That idea of only going in one path through the repetition, make it a big letter M, make it a small letter M, draw it in crayon, make the color variation. That whole idea of repetition with early learning, with choice, is part of that consideration. All of us repeat. We go into a room and we remind ourselves why we went into that room. Or at least I've been teaching long enough to try and remember which book was I going for as I immediately find another book I want to get and another book and it's like, don't leave the room without the book you came in here for. It's the idea of I need repetition, but I need some choice. So I'm using an adult humor example to talk about giving children, we're going to read these two books, do these two word learning activities, but there could be flexibility and interchangeability that makes a child feel they have agency and empowerment. So what happens is things are in short-term memory and we all know about the working memory and the short-term memory, but to go to long-term memory, the research of the early learners says to us, they need seven to 10 repetitions spaced, but in close proximity. So that concept is, we can know it today, you heard the old adage, in one ear and out the other. That is not what we're talking about, and that is not true. But the idea that if we space the repetition and do it again, more times, with fun, with enjoyment, how many times do you think I kept referring to the M from Max's name? So the old idea of one and done. We've done it once, I taught that. It's done. But the cognitive concept we're talking about means we have to come back to revisit it over time. But why choice? What is for building cognition? Choice is what's build memory, agency, ownership. So if we only have repetition, but we don't have a degree of choice. Now, I used to say to my colleagues at the university, we're still talking forced choice. We know the parameters of what we want to teach today, but it's possible there could be a little bit of flexibility, which says, as a learner, I control some of my own learning, but I need to do it all, but it can vary. And that's one thing that we've been talking about a lot in this work, one and done, but the cognitive concept is revisit over time and choice makes it memorable. I repeat it on purpose. I said it at the beginning, I gave an example, then I gave a repetition. It will stick differently. It will go deeper. It'll go from working memory to long-term memory more often that way. Simple example. So what do we do? What are ways to implement? And think about this in regard to alphabet charts. We have many different versions in classrooms. The possibility of some games, listening with ears and looking with eyes. You know those big glasses that children love to do. And if you're old enough to remember uh, Ding Dong School and Miss Francis, she had a magnifying glass. I have never gotten children to look more closely at something than just having a glass in a little frame, which isn't magnified, but they go, oh my gosh, I'm listening and I'm looking. That's both sides of the brain adding now, making the print visible. It comes together in a very logical way. I didn't say much about games with repeating sounds, but that actually takes us to the concept I've been talking about, which is long-term memory and not just one and done, but we listen with our ears and we look with our eyes. We often say, as Mari Clay said, to the ear, to the mouth, to the eye, to the hand. How do we repeat in many ways throughout the day, make it fun, but have opportunity for choice? Those are big ideas I've been talking about. So when I say fun practice, I'm not talking fluff. I'm talking serious focus, but with a lighthearted 
different voices in the room, ping-ponging across the room, repeating again for fluency. So when we decode, which is essential to teach and stress, we aren't done. I like to say in a rhyming fashion, we've just begun, but much more has to be done. So while that's a rhyme, in a bad way, I have to admit, people would say, you're not a poet. But from that standpoint, when I wrote that, I was thinking the idea is those sounds repeat, but they don't all look alike. Spelling and sounding may not match. That's part of what we have to expose kids to, back to the first idea, making print visible. Thank you so much, Dr. Klein. Yeah, to you, my friend. Yeah, so let's talk about those fun ways to practice um, within Seesaw. So Seesaw now offers, um, as Tracy mentioned earlier, a subscription of standard aligned ready to teach lessons that support students with skills that they absolutely need the most. Our fun phonemes lessons collections was built to support phonemic awareness. So um, earlier, Dr. Klein emphasized the importance of that spaced repetition of sounds in order to build long-term memory of those sounds. With fun phonemes, each lesson is designed to give students that repeated practice to hear, to interact with, and to practice the sounds in the English language. We know that children's speech sounds develop as soon as they utter their first babbles as babies, while a Acquiring uh, the sounds vary from child to, child to child. Research does show that there is a predictable pattern to which they are able to produce sounds according to their age. And um, our activities were created to follow this pattern. Fun phonemes is completely focused on sound. So it's all um, phonemic, all audio, and each activity includes ways for the child to see the sound in many different ways. So now I'm gonna actually jump into a fun phonemes lesson. So here I am into um, in my Seesaw journal. The Fun Phonemes collection is available for all teachers. We're excited to share with you beginning this week as a part of our teacher preview um, in our activities library tab. So you'll notice um, within the next few days that you'll have um, access to this amazing collection in your activity library. So let me show you how to get there. So I am going to begin by tapping that green add button going to assign activity. And now you see I'm in my activity library. I'm going to click on that tab that you see that says Seesaw Lessons. There's a little new shiny new icon next to that. You will see that appear in your library shortly. So here I am in the lessons library. So this is where you will have a preview of these four collections. You'll have access to all the lessons within um, these collections, but we're going to take a look at fun phonemes. So I'm going to click on fun phonemes. And we're actually going to explore the letter I lesson. So I'm going to scroll down to find that letter I lesson. And with these Seesaw lessons, you do have the ability to assign them directly from the library. You don't have to save them to your personal library. So I'm going to go ahead and click assign. I am going to select the class like I would normally do. And I am going to go ahead and assign that to my students. And um, when students respond to a Seesaw activity, they're gonna see that activity show up in their activity library. And all they have to do is click add response. So I am gonna um, submit a response on behalf of the sample student so that we can pop into this fun phonemes lesson for the letter I, and you can see what it looks like from a student um, viewpoint. So students begin here on the clickable homepage, which takes them on this journey to explore that letter I sound. So they begin here by clicking that link where it says start. And they will begin that journey by watching an instructional video with teacher Barnes and her buddy Soundhound. So I'm going to play um, the video for you. And as you watch this video, I want you to notice how teacher Barnes and Soundhound are really intentional about um, enunciating clearly and visually showing students how to make the sound. And this is also um, really great to support students in learning how to form their mouth to make the sound, especially now when our students have on masks and they can't see us 
actually articulate and make those sounds with our mouth. Um, so in the video, um, as we watch, um, you'll notice that the sound is repeated over and over again to support that strategy that Dr. Klein mentioned of spaced repetition. So let's take a look. Welcome. Today is the E sound party. Come join me. Hi, Teacher Barnes. Oh, hi, Sound Hound. Uh, Teacher Barnes? Yes. You got a, you got milk on your lip. Oh my goodness. Milk on my lip? I took a sip of milk and now I have it on my lip. Better wipe it off before the party begins. The milk is off my lip. Now I'm ready. Are you ready, Sound Hound? <laughs> Let's make the I sound. First, I keep my tongue lifted up to my top teeth as I slightly open my mouth and say I. I. Now you try. Mm. I. You've got it. Listen to these words with the I sound. I. Bib. I dish. I six. Now you try. Mm. I zip. Right. So I just wanted to play a little bit of that video so you can get an idea of what students will see. So after they watch that video on how to make the I sound, you'll notice that um, there are these kid friendly navigation buttons. So they're just going to click on that arrow and that's going to take them to the next page. On every page, there are directions in English and in Spanish that explain for students um, what to do. And then the content is all um, in audio. So either a video or an audio. So um, students will nav navigate throughout um, this lesson and they will listen to the sound multiple times. Um, they will actually um, have opportunities to um, circle the cloud that makes the I sound and record themselves saying the I sound as they navigate, they get to sort images that make that sound. So they have that repeated practice of engaging with um, that I sound. And at the end um, of the lesson, after they go through that journey, um, there is a connection activity um, that can be completed at home specifically with a family member or with a friend that brings families into the learning. But you'll notice that there are multiple activities that students engage with in multidimensional ways. This is meant for students to be com to complete over the course of multiple days. So you can assign this for a center activity. I saw a question in the chat about um, how you um, you still how you differentiate for those students that are progressing or at advanced and those students that still need more support. This is a way that you can differentiate. You can assign these lessons just for that stu those students that need that support. They have everything within the lesson to interact independently. You see they have the draft button. They can save that um, as a draft and they can come back to it each day. So that is um, that letter I activity. So we do have for you three fun phoning lessons to share with you today. Um, these lessons include a short I lesson, an NG lesson, and a long E lesson. Um, but remember, as a part of our new teacher preview, you will have access to the entire collection in your activity library. Um, like uh, the demo that I showed you, all of the lessons allow students that repeated practice with the sound in multiple ways. And we will be sharing the links to all of these uh, lessons with you at the end of this session and in the follow-up email. 